haven't you told your family yet that you are positive? Um. Okay, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a very sensitive topic. So the news came as a shock to me. I was full of regrets. After you see your results and your products, because you you keep you start thinking, you start wondering, is it Mr. A or B, C? Especially when you know, okay, you've had a lot of body count and multiple sexual patterns, so it's hard to keep track. Our first guest on the show is Francis from Nigeria. Francis shares with us that he was diagnosed in 2017 and has been living with the disease since then. However, nobody in his family knows that he is actually HIV positive. So he's using our platform today to share this news with his family. And um, I'm very excited, like I always say, to have this conversation with him so we can hear some of his life experiences and uh, some of the triumphs and challenges that he's going through living as a HIV positive man in Nigeria. Thank you so much, Francis, for joining us on the show today. Thank you. Francis, you shared with me that you contracted HIV in 2017. I would love to know how old you were, you know, when you you contracted HIV and um, how did you react to the news when you knew that you were positive, when you found out? Okay, um, so I contracted it at, uh, well, that was 2017. I was 19 years old then, but I was diagnosed 2018. That was when I got tested, 2018. So the news came as a shock to me. I was full of regrets. I had, you know, I had to reflect everything and I was devastated. I didn't know what to do. I thought it was an end line for me because all I could take of is just death, death. This is the end line for you. You're going to die. You're going to the sick and then you will die and then that's all. You said that you were only diagnosed in 2018. What Thank prompted you. you to go get tested? Because we know not a lot of men just, you know, take themselves to the hospital. What made you go to the hospital to get tested for HIV? So I had to get you. So I had, like, I, I still became sick regularly. So I had, um, first of all, I had, uh, what's it called? Constipation. So from the constipation, I had rashes all over my skin. So it got to the extent I was like, okay, you know what? I should go and uh, get tested for all kinds of STDs. So the result came out and HIV was the only one that came out positive. And the doctor called me and I was like, okay, do I have a family member I have to talk to? This is it. And you know, you can put me on treatment and all those kind of things. But then I told him that you should give me time to go home to think about it. So I went home, gave it a tour, said so I cried my eyes out and then I'm like, okay, fine. So I went back to him and then I asked him, what are the process? What are, what do I need to do? And how much will it cost? So he was like, I don't need to pay anything. So I had to do one a blood bank test and some other tests and then to determine which kind of um, ARB medication to put me on. So I sent my treatment immediately. The first treatment, the first three, three months was hell because I noticed some change. At night, I can't sleep. My body was racking so a lot of things. I was feeling very dizzy. I lost appetite in a lot of things that I used to eat. And I said, it's a thing that I'm not used to. And I said, it's a lot. Is it challenging to remember to take your medication? And honestly, because I, I ask this, I have vitamins just beside my bed corner, right? I wake up in the <laughs> morning and I remind myself that I'm going to take my vitamins. By the end of the day, I have forgotten to take my vitamins. Do you experience that as well? Because remembering to take something every single day, are there days where you actually forget that you are on medication? Yes. Yeah, there are days I actually forget, like, okay, I'm not taking my day. So, um, I, normally I take it from the main uh, container, but then I noticed that I normally skip some days. So I got, um, there is this long, I don't have it here, there is this long box, it has it from Monday to Sunday. Whether you can keep track of your medication. So when I don't, when I missed it, I know, okay, I missed this day. But now I don't see it as 
trouble and the diagnosis that's taking a multivitamin. We are going to be talking to a number of also HIV positive men, some born with it, some, you know, just like you got it later in their mm. life. And the one question I'm asking everybody is how does this affect your romantic life? Are you forced to disclose your status to someone that you feel is the potential romantic partner? And when you share your status, how do people, how do you know those people, how do they react to that? How has it affected your romance and your social life? For me, I feel personally, it's a personal choice to disclose it or not to disclose it. And sometimes it's good to disclose it when it's necessary. But sometimes it's not good, but rather you place it to protect the other person. In as much as I'm undetected, I still please it. If I feel like I don't want to tell you about my health status, I feel like it's none of your business, so I can tell you. But if I feel like I can trust you, I owe you that, then I can actually it. So it's a personal choice. I see. This is this is quite um it's interesting because I also like the tone of your voice. I like how you look really good. Hello, you look healthy. Um <laughs> <laughs> we're using this to also show people that, you know, <sighs> people who have HIV live normal, healthy lives, happy lives, loving lives. Yeah, and that is possible. Course. But you, you shared something with me that, you know, I want us to get into, because that's actually, you know, it's a very serious conversation that we are having as much as we're, you know, yeah. making it quite fun. You said that nobody in your family knows that you have HIV. Mm, yes. Just my aunt. Just your aunt. I mean, my you're on the aunt. show today to talk about the fact that yeah, you have HIV. Yeah, so yeah. I just want to be able to, you know, prepare you that the family is going to see this video so this is your way of coming out to them to let them know that you are positive and um why haven't you told your family yet that you are positive um okay it's a lot it's a lot it's a very sensitive topic right stuff and it's a lot to do with and most people are not really educated or learning about things like that. It's just, it's just things they get from people. So they hold on to that. So I feel like my family, most people in my family, I owe them. I owe, it's not like I say I owe them to tell them that I'm HIV positive. The only person I felt like, okay, I really need to talk personally. And I don't know if she gets the same thing, which is my mom. And yeah, I've been dying and I've been wanting to tell her. But then I feel like it's going to be too much for her to handle because she cherishes me so much and she wants to see me grow and be very like to be a very ambitious and all that. Like she has this high dream for me. So me telling her, I feel like it's going to break her because she'll feel maybe it's the end of the world for me. And you know, if she wants to contact HIV, that means Currently, we're going to have kids who have But today, it's, it, it's not the same. The case is different today. I mean, I can have I can have kids, and my kids are HIV free because I've already paid the price. I've already worked so hard to be where I am today. So, for me, I feel like I don't really need all my family member into my business. The only person I really want to know about this is my mom and my aunts. Then probably my grandma, which me, my grandma, I don't really, really you know, pay much attention about that. But then, yeah. So family, most people don't tell their family because it's come with judgmental discrimination, you know, questions on unnecessary questions will keep popping up. And these are things we don't want to get. You know, the beginning of our conversation, you said when you found out that you were HIV positive, you felt traumatized one, but you, there was a lot of regret going back, playing out what happened, yeah. who could it have been? How did I get it? For someone to yeah. ask you that question, does it now take you back to that position, you know, to that moment when you were just diagnosed? Is that one of the reasons why those kind of questions can be off putting Yeah, because... Because after you after you see your results and your product, because you you keep you start thinking, you start wondering, is it Mr. A or B, C? Especially when you know, okay, you've had a lot of body count and multiple sexual factors 
So it's hard to keep track. Now that, you know, the, the, like you said, the main person that you're thinking about is your mom. How would you want your mom to react when you tell her or disclose your HIV status? What do you think would be the best, um, will I say the best response or reaction from her that would give you peace? Where I am now, I'm at peace. However, she's choose to react. I'm not seeking for peace. I mean, she it's her right to react that way. And I expect her to react that way. So it's my duty to educate her and tell her, so this is it. I've had this for all those years. I've battled with it. And I'm still living. And I'm still your son. It doesn't change who I am. So it's left for me to tell her, this doesn't change what I define it. Yes. I love that because you just answered the next question I was going to ask to wrap up the show. And I was going to ask you, what would you want to tell your mom? You know, if she's watching this, what would you want to tell her or tell whoever it is that is a loved one that you haven't disclosed your HIV status to? What would you want them to know about you as a man, not just as a HIV positive man, as a human being? What would you want them to, to know? This is an opportunity to tell them. Well... Everybody in my family knows I'm a fighter. I'm strong, like brave. I want all of them to know that I'm still that person. Not to change. Thank you so much, Francis, for joining us on the show. It has been an immense pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. Thanks, you. Thank you so much.